Hi everyone, this is Mountain Earth Witch and I'm doing a follow-up video on the topic of wool because of some of the comments that I received so I wanted to explain a little further and by the way, yes, I did change my channel name to Mountain Earth Witch um, it suits me better than Mountain Spirit Witch so I am now Mountain Earth Witch and so I want to talk about wool and the, the comments that I received um, are that the domesticated sheep continuously grow wool without having um, a season where they molt or lose some of their winter wool for the summer season. Wild sheep naturally grow the appropriate amount of wool they need um, and they don't just continuously grow it but domesticated sheep have been bred so that they keep on growing wool. And so their point is that they have to be sheared or they will die from overgrowth of wool, not being able to move or breathe or whatever, just being, being able to be mobile. So, so now this is, this is true, but my, my solution to this problem, my, estimated solution or proposed solution is that human society should stop breeding these domesticated sheep of the breeds that are continuously growing that wool. If there are dairy breeds of sheep that don't do that, then that's fine. But the ones that are specifically um, growing wool year round where it just continues to grow, those breeds, they should stop breeding and the sheep that already exist on planet Earth should be gathered up onto animal sanctuaries where people with very kind, caring um, qualities that are working with this sh the sheep can very gently shear the sheep with the uttermost care versus the money-making greedy wool industry that doesn't care and are harming the sheep in so many ways. So for a very good example of this, I'm going to turn to some information from Farm Sanctuary where they have rescued a lot of wool um, breeds of sheep and what they do and their practices on their farm to care for the sheep. So here it goes. All right, so Quarantine hair has been a challenge for many, even sheep. Those woolly winter coats are an excellent defense against the cold, but come springtime, the style's out of season. They're hot, they're itchy, and they're even threadbare in parts from scratching up against the barn for a bit of relief. Who needs all that extra weight once it's finally time to graze and gallivant on pasture? So, a spa day is in order. It takes about three days to shear the 80-plus sheep at our New York shelter. Their yearly appointments are for April or May. Last year, we added a second late summer session because the wool grows back fast and the sheep could overheat. Our Southern California flock also gets two shears per year. Here are the top five questions we get about the topic and they, these are actually photos from their farm from sheep that have been um, the before and after pictures before being sheared and after stuff like that. So sheep didn't always need to be sheared. People breed sheep to produce excess wool. Wild sheep and certain types of hair breeds like the catadin will naturally shed their coarse winter coats. They do this by scratching their bodies against trees and rubbing away their extra fluff as the weather warms up. Most of our rescued sheep are wool breeds or wool hair crosses and can't regulate this excess weight on their own. So we shear them to keep them from overheating and to improve their quality of life. This excess wool isn't natural and sheep are the ones who pay the price. So what is the problem with wool? Commercial shearing is very different from a simple haircut. Shearers are paid by the, by the sheep, not the hour. So there's an incentive to work as quickly as possible. 
As sheep are prey animals, they're frightened by the rapid pace, rough handling, and whirling of the shears. They also they can also get cut from the sheer um, speed of operation or while trying to reorient themselves to feel safe. Merino sheep bear the brunt of this cruelty. The Australian favorite yields soft and bountiful wool beloved by fiber artists and fashionists alike. But the issues go beyond shearing, mutilations, including castration, tail docking, and mule sing. The slicing and removal of skin from the sheep's backsides are the other common traumatic and sometimes deadly practices in raising sheep. As sheep age, they stop producing top quality wool. They're slaughtered for meat. In Australia, the source of most of the world's wool, such sheep are typically exported by boat to countries where mature sheep meat is commonly consumed, enduring grueling journeys of up to three weeks. All right. Um, we, um, what is shearing like at Farm Sanctuary? It's a much slower process, completed over several days. We work with a shearer who's known our flocks for years and treats our sheep with care and respect. Our caregiver team is also there throughout the process to assist with handling and to ease extra jitters. But it's still a little scary, even with all these precautions. Sheep don't like feeling vulnerable. Even the calmest among the flock may feel a bit tense when gently turned on their sides for a thorough shear. It's safe when done correctly, even for older sheep, though some with special needs may remain standing. And even when taking the very best care, some accidental cuts still happen. Our caregivers apply a liquid bandage to their skin and monitor them until they've healed. Then we administer one of their annual vaccines and send them off to join their friends on pasture. How do the sheep feel about it? Once everything's done, they feel light and free. A literal weight has been lifted from their shoulders. They kick up their heels, roughhouse a bit with their friends, and enjoy their first graze with the cool breeze against their skin. Some also enjoy the extra attention from their human admirers, so it's much easier to scratch their backs without all that wool and embedded hay in the way. Here's our tip for giving the best sheep scritches. You'll know a sheep is happy when they close their eyes, turn their heads, and smack their lips and flick their tongues as though saying, ah, yes, that's the spot. So... What do we do with the wool? We don't keep it, we don't keep or sell it, but why not? It seems ethically sourced. We're not raising the sheep for their wool, and we take great care throughout the shearing process. By approaching animals with the mindset that their lives are their own, then it's easy to see how the wool isn't really ours to use or sell. To do so would further commoditize these sheep. Instead of using something cultivated from unnecessary harm, we give the wool back to nature, laying it out upon the hillside for compost and for wildlife to collect for their nests, and in 2010 we donated some to help sponge up the deep water horizon oil spill. It's one way to restore a bit of natural order and honor our good friends the sheep. So. That is the rundown on what happens at farm sanctuary with these wool breeds of sheep, how they very gently, with the utmost care, shear the sheep just to improve their life, their lives and safety so they're not trying to scramble in the heat with too hot of a coat on and, you know, lighten their load. And that's just how I feel the sheep should be treated. I don't think <clears throat> that people should be making money off of their wool. I think that it is it is a very bad practice because it leads towards, it leads towards exploit, exploitation and animal cruelty and abuse. There's just no way around it. The greed is too much. People are too much into the money-making aspect. And it's it's never going to work in a very, very 
ethical, caring way. It's not going to work that way. So my feeling is if you don't have your own sheep in your backyard, screw buying wool. Don't even go for it. Buy vegan alternatives for fabrics and other materials. So uh, my next video, I'm going to talk about the silk industry and peace silk also. So that's what's coming next. Music